When I tell people that I want to go to Mars, one of the first things that they say is, well, that sounds crazy. It's just a dry, boring desert. Why would anyone want to go and live there? So there's a lot of misconceptions floating around about what Mars is actually like that I want to address. So let's look at our options. If we're going to live somewhere outside of the Earth, where can we go? So a return to the moon is an idea that's often tossed around. But the problem with the moon is that it has almost no atmosphere, which means it's continually bombarded by radiation and micrometeorites. You only need to look at the surface of the moon to be able to see that it's not a particularly nice place to live. To be honest, it's not really that much better than a vacuum, and we all know how hard life is on the International Space Station for astronauts at the moment. So, forgetting the moon, we can move on to the closest planet to the Earth, namely Venus. So Venus is the planet that's most similar in size to the Earth, and therefore has the most closest gravity to the Earth, but also allowed to stop there if ever there was a hell, it is Venus. The temperature is hot enough to melt lead, the atmospheric pressure is 93 times that of the Earth's, not even to mention the sulfuric acid rain. Um, I would, I for one would not like to go on holidays with Venus. You can move closer to the Sun, you can go to Mercury, but Mercury is even worse than the Moon to be honest. It's just a hot version of the Moon. And that only leaves the outer planets. So once you move past Mars and past the asteroid belt and you get to Jupiter and Saturn, they have some very good moons there which are fascinating from a scientific perspective. But the problem is it's just too cold and too dark by the time you get out that far. At Jupiter, for example, it only receives 4% of the light that the Earth receives from the Sun. And there's also a radiation belt that surrounds Jupiter, which would render human life impossible on all of the moons of Jupiter, apart from potentially Callisto. So that leaves Mars the red planet. Let's take a quick look at how Mars compares to the Earth. So the average surface temperature on Mars is minus 63 degrees Celsius, its atmospheric pressure is 1% of the pressure on Earth, and its gravity is 0.38 times Earth's gravity. Its day is remarkably similar to the day on Earth, at 24 hours, 39 minutes, and 35 seconds. Its axial tilt is also almost identical to the Earth's, at 25 degrees, which compares to Earth's 23.5 degrees. And that means that Mars has seasons, just like our own planet, albeit the seasons are of different length, compared to Mars' orbit being significantly more elliptical than the circuit orbit of our own planet. Sounds harsh? Well, actually, the more that we learn about Mars, the more hospitable it seems to be. Spirit actually found that equatorial temperatures on Mars regularly go above freezing, and in some instances go as high as 35 degrees Celsius, which I'm not sure we can say about the climate in the UK at the moment. And in 2008, NASA's Phoenix lander discovered water ice only 4.6 centimetres below the surface, so Mars is nowhere near as dry as we once feared. This was further backed up by Curiosity, which recently discovered that in Gale Crater, 2% of the soil by composition is water, which lends further support to the theory that Mars was once a wet and warm world, much like our own. And although the atmosphere is a lot thinner than the Earth's, even Mars's thin atmosphere is sufficient to block out a large portion of cosmic radiation, which is vital to support life on the planet. And what about the lower gravity? So it's actually speculated that the lower gravity on Mars will have enormous health benefits for people, particularly in older age, because there'll be less stress placed on muscle and bone mass. So whilst we certainly could live on Mars, the question now becomes, should we live on Mars? I think David Bowie probably summarised it best. It just seems to me that we have a driving sense of passion and curiosity to explore the unknown and to understand this universe in which we live. And for me, that is just what makes us be human. Mars holds the answers to some of the biggest questions we have ever asked. And it's so exciting to think that our generation could be on the verge of becoming the first to finally answer these questions. It's been over 40 years since the moon landings, but now is the time for our Apollo moment. Mars, unlike anywhere else, is a place that we can truly make a home.